Hi knitters, welcome to PJ Knits. My name's Penny and I live in Central Illinois and I'm a knitter, a blogger, and a YouTube podcaster. <sighs> and today is Wednesday, July 6th, uh, 2022. In Central Illinois, it's uh, not as hot as it was yesterday. It was 99 degrees by way of my watch yesterday. And today it's a little overcast, but it's going to get hot again. So what can I say? This is July in Illinois, and um, we've been having July weather since May-ish. <laughs> so anyway, deal with it. This is what we're going to do. We're going to keep cool, and we're going to do some knitting. So welcome to my podcast slash my journal of my knitting. I am so ecstatic, thrilled, overwhelmed by the many new subscribers, the many views that we've been getting, and your wonderful, wonderful comments. Thank you so much. And, you know, I was thinking about this this morning, and I think we're building a community here at PJ Knits because we're all over the United States. We're people who don't know each other. Um, we're in we're across the seas. We're and we have some in Australia and we have some in um, Scotland, a couple and Ireland, and far reaching for those who haven't said where they're from. And I am just so super thrilled to have um, all of you be a part of my journey. Thank you, thank you so very much. Um, I can't say that enough. So, uh, <clears throat> anyway, let's get started on some knitting, and the, that's what you're here for. We're going to talk, first of all, we're going to start out with um, summer sweaters. I've got a couple that I want to talk to you about today and some that I have talked to you about before. Um, you've seen me knitting on this one for um, a couple of months. Um, my friend Peggy and I have been kind of doing a virtual. We were doing it virtually in May, knitting on this. And um, this is called The Lovely Tea. I talked about it before. It's by Kimberly, Kimberly McAlinden. And here it is. And you can see my little, I use my paper pattern um, while I'm knitting. I use my journal for other notes and we'll talk about that either a little bit today and maybe in a future little episode. But I make a lot of notes on my pattern um, as I'm as I'm knitting on um, my garments or whatever I'm knitting I make them on here and then I transfer them over to my journal and so I just wanted to talk a little bit about this the yarn is stitched together um, yarn it is a finger weight it is in the blue Christmas colorway of 2019 and I just I love knitting on this sweater I especially Love the detail that Kimberly has put around the neck, which is something new, a slip stitch. And also, though, this puffed sleeve, which I just absolutely love. Um, in her pattern, she did a rib at the bottom, and I decided, along with Peggy, we decided to do um, the slip stitch there as well. So I have slip stitch here, slip stitch here, and at my hem. And I have also, again, lengthened my sleeves a little bit. And all of my notes are on uh, my Ravelry project page. And on my project page, my username on Ravelry is Penny J. So I, I try and list all of my modifications that I've done um, on my pattern, uh, on my garments, or my knitting on the Ravelry page. So you can find all that information there. I always lengthen it. I went up a little bit size on my... Um, towards the hip on the knitting needle and also I wanted to just give you a, a quick overview of what I have in my knitting journal. Um, I always do a start and an end date and I'm using some new stickers that I'm getting and I try to put my gauge of what the pattern's going to be and um, what gauge that I got and any kind of mods, what I what I casted uh, what needle size I used to cast on um, and tried to and if there was any changes to the pattern that I made I list them in my journal because I like to go back to my journal periodically and look at that um, and as I said all the modifications I put into here as well um, I, I, I put the yarn um, 
um, what I did my swatch on as well. And then I always list a picture, I, I'm not a picture, um, a snippet of the yarn in my journal along with the uh, yarn band label as well with tells me what it is and um, its content, the colorway. And I just started doing this. I also put how many skeins I bought and how many I use. So if I have a leftover, I know that I had leftover and sufficient uh, for this or I didn't, you know, on that. So I just started here this time putting, uh, I, I sometimes put inspiration photos, but this particular one is what Kimberly's finished it garment look like and in here I also did um, my hashtags and any uh, and a use of, of my stickers so not only do I put it all on my paper pattern and I know it may be redundant but then I put it in my journal and then I also put that in my Ravelry page just a project page so that people who are trying may want to know something about it um, about what changes I made can find it there I also love putting it in my journal because I love to go back. This a lot of times is readily available next to my knitting chair in a bag so that I can pull it out and say, oh, what did I do on that to make, to um, add for the hips or, or lengthen the sleeve or a gauge or a needle? And also so I can find out if I have a whip in progress, what particular needle I'm using so if I used a five on this, my interchangeable, and I go to start something else um, with a five, I know where it's at, so I can either go get it or motor on. So I keep all of that information in my journal, and um, we talked about this last winter, and I certainly will, I think, um, talk about my journal more as we go, and I, and I will try and do a video all by itself with that um, in the future as well. So that is The Lovely Tea by uh, Kimberly McLinden. And um, I have said this um, to friends too. I see making, this is a top down, paid for pattern. I see using this sleeve treatment in a, uh, I can see this in a long sleeve sweater for winter and then maybe coming down and doing a long sleeve with just a slightly little bell um, sleeve. So this, this particular the um, sleeve I think um, has possibilities for um, changing it up a little bit. So anyway, um, next up, what's on my mannequin? This is one that I knit some time ago, and this is called the Perfect Summer Tea, and this is a Janice Ficker design. I used stash yarn, and this was um, it was called Bio Bimbo, and I've had it for a long time, and knitted up two, three years ago when I thought we were going to go to ZK before um, the pandemic started. And so um, this is a look at her pattern, a super, super nice, uh, easy, quick pattern in the round to do. Now you can see there are a couple of things. She has a little um, pocket that she did in contrast here and a pocket that you could do here in contrast. I did not put the pocket and again, you can find this um, on my Ravelry um, project page, the mods that I did for the Perfect Summer Tea, because I decided at the time I was knitting the, the uh, Weekender by Andrea Mowry, and I decided I liked this um, detail because I didn't want something just plain. Um, I, so I did the, the detail from the Weekender on down the front as well. And this was a naturally striping yarn, and I didn't really know that until I got into it as well. Um, she did a I-cord around um, the neck, which I did do, and she did one under the sleeves and also the hem, and I chose to do a longer sleeve again. I lengthened the sleeve, and I did a little bit different of uh, increase here. I like this detail of where you get a little bit of a bead there. You get a little bit of a bead in that particular one. So I did ribbing here, ribbing here, and I again, as you can tell by the pattern, I did lengthen the sleeve, I do believe, a little bit, as did some others. So this was um, back in the day. And so I love this. It's a cotton yarn and, self, and it's striped, 
and I wanted to share that with you. If you just wanted a really quick one, you, didn't have, you don't have to do any of this, and you could certainly put a rib around here as well and use um, some of your, it's a uh, fingering weight yarn. Originally it was a fingering weight. Um, works seamlessly top down. And um, yeah, out of a sock yarn is what they used at Queen City originally, but this is a bio bimbo that I had in my stash. So I used it up a few years back. And again, a great pattern that you could do whatever you want with it. Um, and a simple little tee if you wanted something like that. Um, for knitting, uh, where you're knitting this uh, summer. So, one of the things that I have in progress that I finally decided on, boys and girls, <laughs> knitters everywhere, I finally decided to do Edie by Isabel Kramer. And this, um, we talked about this, I was on the fence, I could not decide what I wanted to do with this particular um, yarn that I had, this Belvisio. I'll show it to you, remind you what it was. I had a swatch that I did a couple of different things with. And I thought that I would stripe it, and then I just decided it was too, the, the lace weight was just too, too muddy, and that's not what I wanted to do. And so I started in June, and I did what I called a little play knitting, and I kept track in my journal as to what I was going to do. Um, what, what, how many I cast on, um, with what size needle, and what my measurements were before blocking and what they were after blocking. Um, and then I made a little note, some notes, of possible garments that I might want to knit. And I will tell you this. Um, when I finally decided on Edie, I found, which we... Some of you commented, and my friend Linda also says this too, swatches lie. When I, when I originally knit my swatch, I got a gauge here, and this was back and forth, okay? So when I blocked it, my assumption was that I would be okay using the needle that I did here originally. When I cast on for my Edie and I sometimes what I do is I do swatch but when I get to the garment I pay attention and I read my knitting what as I'm knitting the garment getting not too far into it what does that knitting tell me because this I think when I use these two yarns in here and definitely doing a garter on the edge this is just my deduction when I did a garter edge in here I also after I blocked it it's contained right it's contained by these stitches um, and there's fewer of them here so when I cast on my Edie with my original needle here I read the knitting and I looked at it down the road a little bit Hadn't gotten very far, and I'm like, this is too, too loose. So what I did is I ripped it out, and I recast on. I started with um, a size 5 needle, because that's what my, my gauge swatch told me. But after about um, 8 rows into it, I felt that it was very, very loose. I read my knitting. My knitting said, this is too loose. And so I ripped it all back out, and then I recast it on with a size three needle. And still, reading my knitting, I like this so much better. Now for me, I will say also, that may change as I go down the body of the sweater because I have, I have narrow shoulders, shoulders that are kind of rounded. And so I don't need the broadness of perhaps um, of what I'm getting. So I generally do go down to start with knit a little ways, read my knitting, and know that as I go towards the bust, I will probably have to increase my needle size back to my to a four. Usually when I go one, one step up, I don't get much of a change. So I anticipate that as I work down on the ED sweater, that I will probably get back to my five. And definitely by the time I get to the hip, I will want to have that five there. So, that's my thought process 
when I'm knitting um, a garment for me because again, I read my knitting as I go because things do change on a swatch. And, and I believe that with that garter there, it was, and fewer stitches, it has less um, stretch than when I get all this, you know, 100 plus stitches, 200 stitches on there. It's, it's a, worked across, right? There's more, there's more stitches there. And so you really have to be cognizant, I believe, and read your knitting as you go along. So anyway, I have that in my, in my journal. This is out of Belvisio yarn, EY Select, and it's color 07 Ophelia. And I just wanted to give you a kind of a hint of what I, what I am doing. And, and I'm sure that you, I'm sure that you all have had this happen. This particular pattern on Edie is worked back and forth, right? Until you get a significant ways down here and then you will join it in the round, okay? So we know that happens. But what happens on a lot of the patterns, especially the V-necks and this particular V-net, when you're working back and forth, right? There's multiple things going on with the increases. There may be increases for the back and the front and then for the sleeve. And then you work a, a, a wrong side row and then you come back and you do the next row and it's on all the sleeves and there. And so it's kind of hard to keep um, track of those, right? Um, you know, you shut the TV off, you don't take it to knitting, you don't take it to Zoom. So what I decided to try, and this is a um, uh, thing, is I, what I have done is I always put colored markers and I try to establish, you know, like this is the front, um, like the red, and then and kind of um, make distinguishing markers, different colors, so that I, I can... Um, um, remember what they are. And if I can't remember what they are, what I have done on mine is on the back of my one of my pages, I have made page three increases and I've done the multiple rows and I have rewritten them so that they line up with my markers so that I can watch a ball game on TV, maybe do this at knitting or on a Zoom night. And for example, this one I would do, um, you know, I would I follow the instructions and then I'll say knit to first stitch before yellow so that I'm knitting along. I can look at my paper and say, okay, I'm clear and I'm clear and to go until I hit the yellow marker, knit to the first yellow marker, and then I have to do something and then slip, do this, slip the yellow. I've got this on my little piece of paper and whatever comes next after the marker, do it, and then knit to two stitches before the blue marker. Aha, uh -huh. I've hit the blue marker here, right? Do something, follow my instructions, and then I have to do this back and forth and back and forth, and, and there's two separate um, increase rows that where you deal with um, things differently. So that's kind of what I do is I take and rewrite the pattern in my language so that it makes sense to me so that I can say, oh, here's the blue marker, got a blue marker, do something. But, so I'm not constantly looking on my pattern and like putting my highlighter tape. Oh, wait, somebody said something. Oh, wait, is that the second line of that or the first line? And so then I mark and I have to do this 16 times and I mark it down one, two, and I do the hash mark. So that's my kind of, I hope, a hint for keeping tabs on something that I want to be working on but I don't want to have to turn everything off to do it. So that is my Edie, um, and I am have finally, finally decided um, what I'm what it's going to be. And I'm thinking it's I don't know if it's going to be the last summer sweater. I'm thinking there's one or two, and I will talk about those next time because. Quite frankly, there's a there's um, a couple out there I'd still like to do for summer. Ooh, and summer's, you know, we're in July. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. There will be more summer sweaters, I'm sure. I don't think this is going to be the last one. Okay. Have you got your cuppa with you? Bring out your cuppa. Take a sip. If I didn't say this before, I know I didn't. I was going to tell you. Get a cup of coffee. Take a break if you want. Pause if you want. Well, then we're going to get ready for shawls. Grab your knitting, and uh, let's all take a sip and uh, grab your knitting, and we'll, we're going to talk about some summer of shawls.
Okay. Hashtag Summer of Shawls 2022 started back in June. And I've got a couple to share with you. First up, I've made a little progress, not as much as I want, because this really is a quiet project for me right now until I get going. This is what I'm planning. My biggie, one of my biggies. <laughs> I have grandiose ideas, guys. You know that. Press Flowers Shawl. This is by Savory Knitting. And I have mine in progress. This is at a skein cocaine yarn kit in her Royal DK uh, in Iris Succulent. I love this. I had some stickers to put into my book. I just think this is so cool. I had to share this with you. A purple and irises, right? I believe. So there's my notes. That's what my page looks like right now. And that is Summer Shawls 22. And if you'll see there, it says... For me. <laughs> and I've made just a little progress on it. And here you go. Is that not cool? Now, I'm going to warn you, it's usually garbage day here. It's Tuesday, grocery girls. But with the 4th of July, it's Wednesday. And so the garbage man will probably come by oh, about 10 minutes. So... Here's my press shawls. Is that not just the coolest? I think this is so much fun and I can't wait to work on that more. So that's one of my summer of shawls. Number two, the big, the big, the big project <laughs> between now and Christmas. I am working on some more half and half sh wrap shawls. And I know I've showed this one before. This one was my original one out of linen quill. And I got this wild idea to knit some for Christmas presents. So I'm going to just give you a, whirl, a show of what's going on here. This is one I started that's been in progress for quite some time. This is out of Stash Yarn. This is out of an alpaca. It is out of a DK weight. I made Soundtrack Marie Green a couple of 4th of Julys ago. And I had leftover yarn. And so then I just got to... The second colorway last night, well, early this morning, because I was having fun with it, wanted to make sure. And I had like this much left of the navy. I was playing yarn chicken, seriously. I was adding the yarn in the middle of the row. Um, I was just really, I was really worried about that. Let's just put it that way. I was really worried. But anyway, um, got the first one done yesterday. This is out of Webb's. Um, they're Valley Yarns that I got many years ago at um, Stitches Midwest, and it's um, in Winter Sky, and the Navy and Winter Sky, and I just added this other one in. So not much to look at right now, but I, what I wanted to call your attention to was on this particular one. I am doing on the end of the row, I am doing a three stitch I cord on it, slipping the last three stitches. Um, I'm not loving it, but at this point in time, I've gone halfway, I'm motoring on. Because I think it's for a DK yarn, I think it's a little, I don't know, and I'll know it more as I go, I think it may be just a little bit heavy. I don't know if it's going to take away from the look of the um, sh of the wrap when I'm done. Um, like I said, I'm not very far into it. This was about three o'clock in the morning last night. I can stay up late if I want now, guys. But anyway, um, so I'm not sure that I'm loving this on a heavier weight. So I'm motoring on with that particular one. Um, that is a Christmas present is my intention. And here's the second colorway. It's kind of a, a I believe they call that winter sky. And again, it's one that I purchased at, from Webb's, their uh, Valley Yarns, oh, quite some time ago at Stitches Midwest. On my original one, if you can see here, all I did on this particular one is I slipped, um, I slipped one stitch on the way, and I think I like it better, okay? Um, it does, it's, this is a nice one for scarves. I know you all have done that before, too gives a nice edge on it and I kind of like it 
almost better than I did the I chord now that I'm now that I'm you know in hindsight on that. Um, I have started um, another one that this one's another one out of linen quill and I'm not very far on it because I really wanted to get my alpaca one to make sure that I was going to have enough yarn and man I was sweating that. Now this particular one I am also doing the I cord on. I don't think it's going in the fingering weight I think it's much much better and you really can't tell too much on it yet but I think when once I get all the black done and and I start the Put the pink in there at some point in time you'll be able to see it better i think this one is okay i am not sad about this but i think if you go a heavy heavy weight yarn uh, or a dk i'm just not I'm, I'm wondering when i get done if that's going to be detracting from the shawl but again i'm not changing it out after at this point in time so that is the half and half triangle wrap um the linen quill one the black one that i'm doing i decided that i wanted it bigger so I have added, um, instead of casting on the normal amount of stitches, I am, I am knitting it on uh, 280 stitches. And I um, went up, to, I believe it's a five or a six, because I was on a three on mine. And so that could be a bit of the issue as well. So I think it's a five is what I'm using right now. So um, those are the, my Christmas knitting that I'm working on, the half, um, the half and halves right now. So anyway. I have some shawls that I want to talk to you about out of ones that I have knit before that I just wanted to kind of share with you from my shawl collection. I really like a good wrap. Um, because, you know, I shouldn't say, I, I, if, I, if I had to pick a favorite, what would it be? I like square. I'm going to show you some of those down the road. I like triangular because I love knitting those and just wearing them. There's not a shawl I don't like, let's just put it that way. But I really do um, have a, a, a thought process too. I do like wrap ones as well. I always have a wrap in my trunk, and I'll show you this one. I've showed it before, but um, I have a wrap always, always in my trunk. And um, I wanted to just share some wraps that I have knit in the past with you from my, my shawl collection. The first one, I again, these are ones that have been knit for some time, but I wanted to share those with you. First one up is um, called Scarfy Thing. It is by Beta, Beta Jezik. She is the dyer behind Hedgehog Fibers, and she has, she has patterns on her website that are um, free patterns that are very conducive to um, using stash yarns, using leftover yarns, um, all kinds of things and I'll share these and these have been others have have shown these on their podcasts three ply and um, frivolous and frugal they uh, have uh, both talked about these as well and I'm thinking you know I have a, a yarn that I talked about earlier that is uh, to go with a purse yeah that it was going to be a suburban wrap but I think is now going to be the outline or also all my stitches. And so you can see they are so conducive. These particular ones are so conducive to hand dyed yarns, to souvenir yarns, most definitely if you wanna put some things together. So I'm kind of looking at these for um, yarns that I have upstairs. Maybe not for summer right now, but definitely this fall and into winter because um, they're super, you know, a wrap can double as so much. For me, it, you know, always having one in the, in the car is I can throw it around my neck if it gets cold. I've used it down at the riverfront, you know, or covered up at my back or around me or across my legs or at my feet. Same thing as we talked about before of how nice shawls are to have. So I'm just going to, uh, on that same um, length with Bayeda, this is called Scarfy Thing, and I knit this out of Two Guys Yarn Company, out of their MCN sock, Blue um, Caracaso. It's a drink, I know that too. And Peach. This particular one has, eye, when you get done, has eye cord all the way around it. But I had the yarn, and I got a little pull there, you can see. But this is this is a nice one to wrap around you. You can do it all in two colors. You can do it in multiple colors. And it was fun to do because of the construction of how you do it. And then you put this eye cord around it. I cannot believe that I did. 
but again a really super one if you don't want to put it on as a wrap most definitely for winter going around the neck keeping you warm you definitely could do that I love this one and it was fun to do and I can't believe I, I think this is probably my first foray into all of that icory but again so I wanted to share this one with you um, this is definitely the a wrap that you could definitely make out of your and a fun fun one to play with and probably not my best work by any means let's say that but still it's knitting the next one that I wanted to show you is called Second Avenue this is by Amy Miller and I used in this one I used Sun Valley Fibers MCN fingering in Woodside Gold Coral and Poolside and then I had some Lolo did it in my stash in Naked Hippo and Carson and I did this um, several years ago this is another fun one that you definitely could use souvenir yarns for um, that's what I love you know when you go and you buy like one skein and then you try and you put them all together I love that this had a, a as you can see it had it kept my interest you know to see what happened there's some striping there and some more of just that and then some eyelets and then some ridges and then more eyelets and then some stripes and then on the other end a different treatment and I love this one and I again this one I originally saw way back when Gigi made it and um, I was like I want to do that and so this is Amy Miller um, Second Avenue and again you could lengthen any of these if you want a longer width and I love that one most definitely and, um, and it's springy fall winter whenever you want to so there we go there's an there's another one for you and then this one was a couple of years ago this is called shadows in the rain Debbie and I did this one together we were going to be going to ZK that year right before during the pandemic and then it didn't happen and she had gifted me this yarn here the year before and we decided for the contest we were going to knit the same we were going to do at the twin contest and so um, I took some things out of my stash this is neon goldfish this was from my local yarn shop and so you can see this this one was a fun one as well and very summery and springy I wore it to the yarn shop um, a month or so ago because it's the air conditioning is always going there and this was kind of fun as well the yarn the original yarn uh, intended here was called uh, woolly mama it was a hand dyed sock it was a hand dyed sock um, in high ho silver and I added my stash yarns to it so anyway I love this one this is another one shadows in the rain um, another nice wrap and then probably one of my most favorite ones that I like is called Ace. this is an espace trico um, free pattern they have several they have updated it on um, Ravelry I made my first one I made years ago for hospice out of what was called jelly beans it was kind of a light worsted weight yarn that was the first one I did for hospice um, out of this pattern and then um, my second one I did um, last year year before this is out of Rowan Kid Silk Haze blushes colorway and Madeline Tosh Prairie I, which is discontinued by cactus uh, is a cactus flower colorway that I that I bought from Espace Trico um, three or four years ago but I know that the, the prairie is now um, discontinued but I added the mohair to it I love this one this is called a say and I love this pattern I just love it you can see it's nice and long um, very conducive to knitting in public a nice gift shawl too, a nice hospice um, wrap as well and I like it so much that I'm knitting another one for hospice and this is out of cascade color um, color weight yarn that I bought at my local yarn shop and you can see it does the little color waves and so I'm knitting another one so this is a little bit heavier and so you get an idea 
of what it is. And again, I think that'll be a nice, and, and would be nice for a gift as well. Um, so just wanted to share that with you. That's a whip in progress as far as the ASA from Espace Trico, which again, um, I am, I'm loving that. So anyway, okay. Last but not least, one of my most favorite books of all time, if you have watched, you know, a year or two ago, you know that I um, I'm, in, I'm in love, <laughs> as it would be, I'm in love with the designer. Um, I met her years ago at knitting camp, and she is not designing as much anymore. But Cheryl Overly, a true treasure in the knitting world, um, the sweetest lady designer that you would ever meet. I'm, I'm telling you that. And I'm, and I'm sorry she's not doing as much designing as she used to because... Um, um, I do appreciate her designs, and I, you know, if you watched me before, you know I've gushed enough. But out of folk shawls, folk shawls, my most favorite shawl book, I have to say, um, and I have I have other favorites, but this is my most favorite. I love this book, and I have knit a couple of the shawls out of that, gifted them away, and um, one in progress. This is the one that stays in my car all the time. This is called a bird's nest. This is a wrap. And it was a pretty easy pattern I, to knit on, um, which I love the repeat in that. This is out of alpaca. This is out originally out of her just beautiful alpaca. She no longer dyes the yarn or carries, does the yarn. It's not really doing that anymore. But anyway, um, in a lightweight, and I just love this as well. And it's a nice long one. It's super long. This is the one that I wrapped around um, my back. Um, earlier this earlier this spring no wasn't it wasn't really this spring anyway out on the riverfront last fall or whatever um, wrapped around my back to keep my back warm in the chair so this is a bird's nest this is a super uh, neat one too if you have folk shawls pattern and uh, folk shawls book and like I said um, I love that and, and I believe you know if you can find the book buy it because there's some really nice um, shawls in there and I see you know I, I'm a fan what can I say okay that is all for today on the shawl route so a couple more things bear with me what am I knitting okay I'm not even gonna haul it out I am still working on the Darth Vader <laughs> for my grandson he asked about it last um, week when I was last weekend when I was over visiting them I'm like yeah I got about 14 more inches to go it is I'm motoring on in it but again um, that's one of my whips I am working on um, the Ravenclaw and I was hoping to get this done for the granddaughter's birthday and did not um, I just you know my my stomach <laughs> or my knitting stomach was bigger than <laughs> my eyes were bigger than my knitting and so I did not get it done but I did get um, the fringe on the bottom and I'm motoring along on it and so um, it's too hot to wear this anyway but I'm working um, I'm working on her scarf this is great uh, zoom and, and TV knitting baseball knitting and knitting in public um, so I'm working my way on that um, further along than it was before so that's kind of what my knitting um, I um, I wanted to share a couple of books with you. A friend, um, a friend on Insta, no, a friend on Facebook, posted these books, and I don't know anything about them. I don't know. Um, I don't know if they're good. I don't know if they're bad. But I what, what I've been doing a lot, and I mentioned this before, is I'm using my public library. Okay, um, when I see something online or on a YouTube podcast, um, I've been doing this since pandemic. Um, and they, my local library makes it so easy because you can go on their login on the app and see if it's anywhere in the library system and then I can request it or if it's on their shelves, I can request it. They pull it off, put it on a hold shelf, put it with my name on, I go right to the hold shelf, come to my self checkout, I check it out and off I go. They have made it so easy for me to check out books and I'm doing that now instead of buying first used to be oh you recommended that book I'm buying it and then I get it and I'm like oh no this isn't exactly what I had in mind right so anyway I started using my library pre-buying and I and some books I bought 
because it's like, yes, I want this in my library, or like, no, I'm not going to. But specifically for reading books, um, I have, instead of buying every book that I want to read, I've been getting it from my library if possible. So anyway, I don't know anything about these books, but I had to get them from my local library because, hence the title. This is Allie Plete, Plete, Pleter, Pleter. Um, it is a riverbank, riverbank knitting mystery. First one is... Let's see. On Skein of Death. I thought that was cool. And then the second one is Knit or Die Trying. So I am reading something right now, but as soon as I finish it, I'm going to start on one of these and I'll let you know. Um, I'll let you know later if they're worth getting from your local library. But it was a knitting book and it was a mystery, and I think it's going to be fun to, to read. So. That's what I did. I wanted to share that book with you. Okay, mail call. I follow on Instagram and on YouTube a friend to knit with, Leslie Friend. And she showed on Instagram a pair of myths that she designed called the Beatrice Myths. And so I went out and got the pattern, and she showed the yarn, and so I had to, of course, I had to buy the yarn, right? And this is from Turtle Pearl. It's her striped turtle toes. It's in trench coat. So now I can make my own. I thought that was so cool. I'm so excited. And she is turtlepearl.etsy.com. And so I'm going to get this. I'm going to knit these for me. I just think that's so cool. And I love the trench coat colorway. So that's a mail call. And while we're on the subject of Leslie, she also has just posted on Ravelry another pattern that she had knit. And this is called the uh, Best Friend Butterfly Blanket. She designed it out of... Uh, Big Twist Value Worsted. I believe you get that from Joann's. And so I got went out and got this pattern because I she showed this on her podcast as well. And so that's another one by Leslie Friend. And um, I just thought that was so cool. Um, I do enjoy her podcast. And I would, um, I would encourage you all to go out and check it out. She posts about maybe once a month. Super, seems like a super sweet lady as well. And um, a nice, nice designer and fun. Um, she's doing some linen quill stuff, kind of egg, egged me on, edged me on, or to do, um, to do buy more linen quill, which, um, and maybe do more of these Christmas presents, but we'll see about that. So, okay. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm on the downhill slide here. I can't believe I almost 45 minutes. I wanted to um, reach out and tell you all we have a winner for the second quarter of Mistletoes. And this person is going to receive Sister Anance yarn. This is new to me. Name a bond. In the colorway Neon and On Fingering. It's a mingering, uh, <laughs> mingering. Merino Wool Nylon Superwash. This is a new designer to me, a new dyer, um, picked up at my local yarn shop, the Fiber Universe. And Erin tells me this is from a dyer up in Chicago. So I thought that was super, super cool. Here is the yarn company. And the winner for our second quarter, Mistletoes, um, is Annetta, um, number 79, post in the Ravelry group. And our Ravelry group is PJ Knits, okay? So, Annetta, this will be winging its way to your, in your direction in the next week or so. Okay. Uh, Zoom. We're go I'm going to try my best to be Zooming for PJ Knits on Wednesday, starting at 6 o'clock, and that's 6 o'clock Illinois time, Central Standard. If for some reason something happens and you all, you log on and you don't see me, you'll know that somebody's either at the house or um, there's been an issue. I'll try to, I'll try to also post 
in the Ravelry group under Zoom Zoom. The login information and the password is there um, and it should be a reoccurring meeting um, for Zoom. We'd love to have you come join us. We had four or five the last time and we're slowly making um, friends and we're building a community. I just, I just love that and building friendships from um, across the, the, the states and in, in, in Canada and out and about across the land, across the waters. And so we'd love to have you join us if it's uh, conducive to your time frame. Again, check the Zoom Zoom on uh, PJ Knits Ravelry Group. If there's an issue at the last minute, I'll try to get on and say, hey, you know, somebody stopped by or there's some issue going on that I can't get on. But that's my plan is to do Wednesdays. I know it probably is spotty for a lot of people in the summertime. Um, so I, I fully anticipate on that. If I get on and I'm on for 10, 15 minutes and nobody's showing, then I will just exit and we'll know. We'll try it again the following Wednesday. So next time I'll have more shawls for you that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about some tanks that I've knit, just a couple. Um, and what I do to wear over the tanks because I do not like to show my arms unless it's 110. Um, so we'll have that. Um, we'll talk about that. And then just finally, just to finish up here, um, I want to say this. Um, and really it's in the, in the way of um, sympathies and condolences out to um, our, our friend Susan who um, lost her bestie knitting friend just a couple of weeks ago, Kim. Kim went to knitting camp, Meg Swanson's knitting camp. That's where I met her and Susan and Sally, and we developed a friendship via knitting. Um, they were kind of our, our gals to go out to dinner with, and we sat in the back together. Um, Kim was an exquisite, a phenomenal knitter. She won awards at the Minnesota State Fair, and she did things that I would never think about doing. Um, and we lost her um, a couple of weeks ago to cancer. And um, ah, that was a blow as well. But my sympathies go out to Susan, of course, uh, to Kim's family, which I don't know and they don't watch here. But um, And Susan, um, I just wanted to say that to her and to our knitting camp buddies um, out there that watch, you know, we, she will be missed very, very much, um, very much. And it's a sad, it's sad when that happens. So anyway, that's it. Um, until next time, I hope to see you on Zoom. Thank you again, new subscribers. If you don't subscribe, that's fine too. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments, reaching out, um, and your, for your friendship. I, I can't tell you um, how it, it, it brightens my, when I see on the email, oh, so-and-so has subscribed or has left a comment and telling me where you're from and um, there are a couple places I just oh I am I'm so jealous of where you live um, and I can only imagine so thank you again for joining us until ne next time knit on with confidence and hope through all crises thank you much bye